God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and a sound mind. Yeah, welcome my great scholars once again to the other class. I'm here to take CRS for GSS1. For the past six weeks, we have been treating called to freedom. Freedom. The reason why I sang that song initially was that, you know, during the call, call of freedom, Moses was a liberator to the Israelites. The same thing they were embarrassed to because they did not fear anybody. God has not given them the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love and assignment. That was how they were able to conquer. So in the history of freedom, we should not fear anybody. We should put our trust in God. That was why they were able to conquer then. That was why I signed that song. Now I want to bring you back to the 74 CRS GSS1, which is call to repentance. For 70 GS1, call to repentance. When you have done what you are supposed not to do, and you think over what you have done that it is not good. You're having a rethink that ah, what I've done, what I've done is not good. Then you want to go and apologize to whoever you have offended. That is going through the path of repenting. To repent means when you are sorry or when you are ashamed of what you have done, that is not wrong. That is wrong, sorry. That is wrong. That is your repenting. So what do you mean by repentance now? Repentance, therefore, is feeling sorry or ashamed of what you have done that is wrong. When you realize that what you have done is wrong or is bad, and you are ready to apologize, to ask for forgiveness, that is repentance. Feeling sorry out of regretting or ashamed of any wrongdoing, that is repentance. But before that, at the end of the lesson today, you should be able to divine repentance and narrate the story of King David and the city of Nineveh's repentance. Yes, we are going to talk about King David it's called to repentance and the city of Nineveh, they are repentance too. Like what I said earlier, that repentance is act of regretting what you have done that is not good. And you beg for forgiveness. That is what is referred to as repentance. You know, when we are in the church of God, when they ask us to pray, Thanksgiving. Then you ask for forgiveness. In the process, we knew before our maker to ask him for what you have done wrongly that you want God to forgive us. That was when we now, normally at times, used to sing this song. Creating me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord. Take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. That is one of the songs 
of repent of repenting of repentance when you repent when you are before god you begin to sing song you begin to tell god this is what i will god forgive me now from this passage now let us go and see what happened to king david and the city of Nineveh. king david was the second king of israel the first king of israel was saul after saul it was david don't forget david that boy that conquers goliath with just a string and a stone. He is the second king of Israel. Now, during the time of David, there is a war between the Israelites and the Ammonites. The soldiers of David went to the battlefront to fight with the Ammonites, but David did not go with them, being the king, he is at home. So on this fateful day, David was just working at the top of the house of his roof. He was just working at Jessica as a king. Then he sighted a woman. Ah, what a beautiful woman. He called one of his soldiers, servant, and said, yes. Who is that woman over there? And they told him, it was one of your soldiers that went to fight the Amorites, Uriah. And the name of the woman is Bathsheba. So the, the man, woman is so beautiful. Not quite long, David asked them to bring the woman to his palace. On getting to his palace, David had to sleep with the woman. Can you imagine? Adultery. Sleeping with another person's wife. And that is not the only thing. No, no. David slept with the woman, and the woman was pregnant. So David said, like, what am I going to do now? What have I, okay. He now sent for the man at the battlefront that the man should come home. When the man came home, he told him, ah, you have a beautiful wife at home. You need to come home and relax. Go home and relax with your God. The man said, ah, no, how can I be at home? And others are there in the world from, no, I will have to go back. And on going back, David instructed that the man should be killed at the battlefront, that you should put him in the battlefront. And the man was killed. Hmm. What a sad story. Don't forget, sleeping with his wife and now killing the man, Uriah. What David has done to him is the king. He has done what he's supposed to do as a king, not knowing that God is watching. And for doing that, he's not the most full of what he has done that is not wrong. Now let us go to the passage now, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 7 to verse 13 to see what happened when David committed that offense and he is not looking back, he's not feeling sorry, he's not ashamed of what he has done. He feel like that is what I'm supposed to do as a king. I can write them. Now let us see what happened. Second Samuel, Bible, you open. Verse 7, chapter 12, verse 7. Nathan said to David, before that, Nathan is a minister of God. God had to send Nathan to King David. And on getting to David, Nathan told him what God said he has done. He told him, you are the man that says the Lord, God of Israel. I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wife into keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. Why have we despised the commandments of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the either with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammonite. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Raya the Eater to be your wife. Thou says the Lord. Let me stop that for now. What happens when Nathan got to King David? He told him, David, 
there was a rich man that has a lot of sheep and goats and horses. And there was a poor man that had just one sheep. When the rich man had a visitor, he couldn't kill one of his sheep and goats. He had to kill from the poor man that is having just one and use that goat to entertain his visitor. David said, in this my city, that person should be punished. He's supposed to be punished. And Nathan said, you are the one. Because you have a lot and you have gone to take what belongs to someone, just one. You have to kill Raya taking his wife. You're supposed not to be. You are the one that have committed that offense. And this is it. God said, the child in the womb of Bathsheba, when you give back to the child, the child is going to die. And you too, you will die. Now that brings back repentance. Can you see? This is Bathsheba and David. When she called her to sleep with her. The woman cannot refuse because it is their king, so that they won't kill him, so that the king won't kill him. They have to concur, agree with the king. This is Prophet Nathan telling David, you are the one taking another person's wife, and you have a lot. If you had told me you want more, I would have given you more, but you did not ask. You went to take from a man that is just having one out of the one that I've given you. And David had to go back to the Lord and pray. He repented. Can you see? Can you see his crown? Can you see him praying? Can you see him? That takes us to Psalm 51. That Psalm is this for repentance. Psalm 51. 51. Let me read us verse 1 to 4. And I'm going to read verse 10 to 12 again. 51 verse 1 to 4. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sins is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Now, let me move to verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a separate spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. That's the verse 12. That is what made me to sing that song initially. Creating me a clean heart, oh God. That is the song David was singing to God. And renew our eyes, spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, oh Lord. Take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew our right spirit within me. That can be seen from Psalm 51, from verse 10 to 12. That was the song of David to God for the painter. So the paint for what he has done. Because he is remorseful, because he regretted what he has done, God forgive him his sins because he was ashamed of what he has done that is not good 
is ashamed of his wrongdoing. He's feeling sorry for what he has done. Then God forgive him. That is the repentance of King David. Another repentance I want to talk about now is the repentance of the city of Nineveh. That can be seen from Jonah chapter 1, beginning to read from verse 7 to 17. The people of Nineveh responded to the call of repentance. How? Can we go to Jonah? Let us go to Jonah. Sorry for taking your time. Yes, from Jonah chapter 1, 7 to 17. I'm not going to read all the verses, but in this verse, we want to talk about Jonah. Jonah, God called him that he should go to the city of Nineveh to tell them what he has done that is not wrong so that they can repent. But Jonah said, no, I cannot go. Jonah had to run away from where he's living. He boarded a ship. He wanted to go to another city of Tarshish. Well, because our God is only present God. He's present everywhere. God sees him. God was just looking at him that I sent you on an air and you don't want to go. Okay, no problem. God was watching. What now happened? Jonah, Jonah boarded a ship going to Tashish. Right there in the ship, something happened. What happened? The sea, there was a storm on the sea. And people were like, what happened? We have been passing, we have been going through this sea, but what has happened? Jonah told them, I am the cause of it. Don't worry, just take me and throw me into the sea. They were like, is this man okay? But they had to do that just for the storm of the sea to seize. Jonah was thrown into the sea and God made a fish, a big fish, a, the whale swallow Jonah. And Jonah had to stay inside the belly of the fish for three days. One, two, three. Three good days in the belly of a fish. Now let us read. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord in the belly of the fish. That's repentance to Jonah. Praying to God from the belly of the fish. And he said, I cry out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me. Out of the belly of the fish, I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Let us move to what happened. When the soul fainted, that is in verse 7. When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord, and my prayer went up to him into the holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. So, in the mouth of the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed to God, and God answered him. And what God wanted him to do, he had the fish out to go and drop Jonah at the entrance of that city of Nineveh, where he had refused to go. The fish just pour him out at the entrance of the city. Jonah doesn't have any option than to do what God asked him to do. Again, in that Jonah 7 to 17. 
God entered Nineveh, the city of Nineveh, and told them, because the city of Nineveh, they are committing so many atrocities, killing, adultery, stealing, backbiting, was the behavior of those that are living in Nineveh. God had to tell them that, so they had to send Jonah to them, telling them that they should repent of what they have been doing. And Jonah had to enter the city of Nineveh and speak to the people there. And the people repented of their sins and they called upon God and the Lord forgave them their sins. That is, regretting what they have done, what they have done that is not good, feeling ashamed, feeling sorry of what they have done, and they repented. And when they pray to God, God answers them. From these two heading, the repentance of King David and the people of Nineveh, what were the moral lessons? Learned there. More or less is when you repent. Number one, God punishes those who show lack of repentance. When you show lack of repentance, God punishes. So the moral lesson is that you should be able to repent of whatever you have done so that the Lord can forgive you. When you have done what is done wrong to God and you want to tell God, Psalm 51 helps you to repent and to ask God for forgiveness. So let's read Psalm 51. Another one is for the fact that David doesn't know that what he has done is, is no good. God sent somebody to him. And in the like manner, I didn't say because he's a king. He listened and he felt sorry of what he has done. The people of Nineveh too, God sent Jonah to them to tell them what he has done that is wrong and they repented. So whenever you have done what is wrong, you don't know, somebody has to call your attention to it, you have to repent and apologize. Ah, sorry, I don't know. I'm really sorry. I don't know I've offended you. Sorry, I won't do that again. It's too. That person knows that, yes, you are remorseful. And the consequences of wrongdoing affect us and destroy us, if you don't know. When you do what is not good and you don't repent at the end, it will affect you. It affects us when we are not remorseful. When you offend somebody and you don't apologize, something, any bad thing can happen. So whenever I know you have avoided somebody or somebody told you, Father ah, Shadi, this is what you have done. Apologize immediately and end everything. And the Almighty God too will forgive you your sins. That is called repentance for week seven. That takes us again to week eight, the same call to repentance for week eight. And in this passage, in this week, we are going to talk about. John the Baptist, call to repentance for people, and the parable of the prodigal son. Before that, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to mention the steps to be taken for repentance. You should be able to narrate the call of John the Baptist for repentance and the parable of the prodigal son. And lastly, outline the consequences of wrongdoing. Our Bible reading is taken from Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. John the Baptist called to repentance. Matthew chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, 
Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel hair and a leather guard about his loin, and his meat was locust and wide honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, conversing their sins. John the Baptist is the forerunner of Jesus Christ. What do you mean by forerunner? The one that has come, the one that has come to prepare the way of the master, preparing a way of somebody that is greater than. That is what we mean by forerunner. So John the Baptist is the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He has come to prepare the way. He has come to Jerusalem to tell them people should repent of all their sins. And after repenting, you will baptize them. He told them, repent of all your sins because the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. His coming is nearer. Repent from your sins. Keep on telling them. And those who are repented will come to him, repenting and he will baptize them. The same thing happened. Before Jesus Christ was crucified, he came to that river Jordan, where John the Baptist had to baptize him. And immediately he baptized him as he was coming out of the water. He, Heavens open and say, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Yes, that word sounds like a do for him. My beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So it is compulsory for you as an individual when you repent of all your sins, you give your life to life, you have to be baptized. It now depends on the kind of baptism you want, martial or immersion. It depends on what they are doing in our different churches. But when you do that so that the Holy Spirit can fill you, and you know that you are all working for God. So John the Baptist called the people for repentance, that they should repent of all their sins. Can you see? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That can be seen from Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea to the people that they should repent and believe in God, to repent of all the sins they have been committing, stealing, killing, fornication, adultery, lying, praying for witness against your neighbor. All those ones are what the people that have been doing there, and they have to come for repentance, and so that it will baptize them and they will wait for the coming of the Lord. John the Baptist is the forerunner of Jesus Christ, and he has come to prepare the way of his master, and his master is Jesus Christ. From there, that takes us to the prodigal son. The parable of the prodigal son. Hmm. Prodigal son. It can be taken from Luke 15, Chapter 11, verse 32. I will only pinpoint the passage, a verse for you there. But what happened in the parable of the prodigal son? There is a rich man that had two sons. A day, the junior was just said, my father, please give me my own share of your inheritance. I want to move away from you. The father was like, what happened? But because he insisted, the father shared and gave him his own share of the inheritance. And the boy had to leave the father's country, totally far away, spending the money lavishly. You know when you have money at hand, you are not working, you are just spending. The money will finish one day because you are just spending it, you are not working, adding to it. That was what happened to this prodigal son. The inheritance the father gave to him, he spent everything, spending in hotel, party, like that with women until the money finishes and he doesn't have anything to eat. He had to beg for a citizen of that country that is looking for work. How would you, what they, they were able to give to him was feeding the pig. So he had to be eaten out of the food of the pig. Can you imagine? But now, this is where the repentance appeared. You now sudden and say, wow. How many of my father's servants 
eat what I'm eating. Let us see what happened in Luke 15, chapter 11. Luke 15, chapter 11 from verse, chapter 15 from verse 11 to 12, but I'm only going to bring your notice to verse 17 of that chapter. And when he came to himself, he said, how many other servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will rise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he rose and came to his father. But when he was yet great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to him, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoe on his feet. And bring either the father's calf and kill it, and let us eat and marry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to marry. Can you see what happened? When you repent, the prodigal son had to look back and say, How many of my father's I had someone eat what I'm eating? They eat and they have leftover. I will go to my father and apologize. And he did so. But on coming far away, the father saw him and rushed to him and kissed him. But the father was saying, Father, I've wronged you. I've wronged God. I've done this. The father said, don't worry. The father had to forgive him. He asked his servant to put him on his best robe, put ring in his finger and shoe on his feet, just because he did what? He bent. He felt ashamed of what he has done that is not good. Feeling sorry, regretting of what he has done that is not good. For doing that, for the painting, the father had to forgive him and say, no, 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 don't worry. So that's why likewise, God forgives every sinner, every one sinner that repented of his sins. God is there to forgive you if you have done what is done and when you call, this is where the prodigal son was coming and the father saw him far away and they had to kiss and hug. Not even thinking that he has taken part of his own inheritance. He has spent it anyhow. Because he repented. He felt ashamed of what he has done. He felt ashamed of his wrongdoing. And the father has to forgive him. Now, what is the consequences of wrongdoing. When you do what is not good and you do not feel ashamed, you are not feeling sorry of what you have done. What happened? Prosecution. When you're a student and you have done what is wrong in this school, you cannot apologize, you cannot say, you not do, you not do that, they will prosecute you. Before you know it, you are out of the school. Another one, when you do what is not good, you'll be punished. You'll be punished for the wrongdoing that you have done. At the same time, if you have done what you're supposed not to do, sleeping, when are you yet married or you are not yet matured, or what a pregnancy setting, which means you've jeopardized your future. 
or you have HIV AIDS. And there is no one. They can only manage, it cannot be killed. And if you're not careful, when you do what is wrong and you cannot apologize, you cannot repent, it leads to death. So those are the consequences of wrongdoing. When you do what is not good and you cannot put that, you cannot sit down to say, what have I done that is making people fear me? What have I done that is making people not to be happy with me? I have everything. So this is what I've really that is not good. Just let me drop everything. Let me bury everything to the ground. That is why I pray Jesus saying for us. I want to be a good son like Samuel that listens to his parents and listens to the elderly ones. That is how I want you to make me. You children should continue praying to God. God should make you like Samuel that listens to the word of elders, that is not playful, is not arrogant, he respects everybody. And the Lord was with him. If you want God to be with you, you should be humble yourself. So that the Lord can direct your path. It's the only God that can direct that directs all someone's path, and nothing will happen. They said, one with God is with majority. So when you know you have offended people, apologize. Repent, be remorseful of what you have done, and apologize so that people can forgive you. I believe from this. Seventh and eighth week of culture repentance. Really understand what repentance is. Repentance is feeling sorry, feeling remorseful, or ashamed of wrongdoing. When you realize that what you have done or the pattern that you have done is not good, and you are ready to apologize and ask for forgiveness, that is what we mean by repentance. King David too was in the picture. Yeah, he has done what is done wrong. He didn't know initially, but when God called him to order, he apologized and God forgave him. The same to the people of Nineveh. God used Nathan, Jonah, to speak to them, and they repented from all what they have been doing. The same to the prodigal son, when he has gone out of the father's country to lavish all the money, his own inheritance, he had a rethink came back home and the father forgave him. The same thing, John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ, called the people of Judea, Jerusalem to Judea to order that they should not sin, they should pray for forgiveness so that the Lord God can forgive them for what he have done and they should not go back to it. That's why he is ready to baptize them. So as the children of God, should be remorseful of whatever we have done that is not good. So when we repent that this thing is not good and supposed not to repent and apologize so that you can be forgiven. Make sure you copy your notes online. Bye for now. See you in our next class. Make sure you stay free at home by doing what the NCD says us to be doing by washing our hands. And whenever I want to move out, you use our face masks. I pray this pandemic will not get our dwellings. We only hear or build with our eyes, but will not come to our dwellings in Jesus' name. See you in our next class.